angle. All right. Is this where I sit? Oh yes, this is exactly where you sit. Okay. So the whole interview we're just gonna do while she's on my lap. Is that cool? All Today right, on enough. Steph and Man. Today on Steph and Man's Steph YouTube, G. YouTube channel. Yeah. I am fortunate today to have my best friend, Rachele, here. I wanted to interview her because she is such an inspiration to all of her followers on her, on her YouTube channel. I would like to spread her message. What do I talk about on my videos? She pretty much talks about all of her cancer stories, her process through chemo, family and friend relationships, and her support system, the symptoms, all of that. Like, I have cancer. So I wanted to cover some of that today and uh, put my own little video together because obviously you guys know I love making videos. So does she. So I think this is a cool little opportunity for us to combine our talents. What do you think? Yeah, we're like... I think if you and I worked on like an actual real film for Hollywood, I think we'd kill it. Well, I do live in LA, so... True, true. Got we'll plans. Like Brad and Angelina. I'll be your doc. Yes, he'll be my doctor too. <laughs> I don't know if I can handle oncology. I test him on oncology. I studied oncology, I think in my second year of med school. I haven't personally worked in, a, in the oncology field in the hospital yet. So a lot of the drugs that she's receiving and a lot of the symptoms, it's nice to to hear, hear it again because I will get I will get tested on it in my uh, upcoming exam. What exam are you taking? I'm currently studying for the uh, step two. Is this starting to get to interview about me here? Uh, On to the interview about uh, Rachele here. Um, where should we start? Start um, with cancer. Let's start with your story. Last year I made the very ballsy decision to move across the country all by myself to Los Angeles, California. It was the best time ever. I had an love amazing Cali. time. I, yeah, I love it there. I was sick for a little bit while I was out there. I had like an appointment in May. The week of my appointment, I noticed all these crazy side effects. Long story short, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a cancer of the immune system slash blood cancer. Well, I decided to move back home to Florida where my mother and brothers and niece live to be with them as I get chemo. Fun fact, when I was diagnosed in LA, I thought that my chemo would be pills. I didn't think that this was real cancer. Is that because your doctor said that or? So she's not an oncologist and she doesn't really deal with that stuff. So she made very light of the situation. I think because she didn't want to freak me out and because I didn't have family there. She kept making it a big deal that I needed to be around my family. She was, she's great and I get what she was trying to do and I appreciate it. I thought I could take a pill. So me moving to Florida was not something that I easily accepted. I actually have a video of my diagnosis, which you can watch here. Right here. <laughs> family lives here, right? So obviously yeah. you wanted to come down and be with your family. And, oh, I feel a sneeze. <laughs> You're supposed to say bless you. Do you know why they say bless you? Why? When people were sneezing, it was because they were sneezing out the devil crawling through their nose into their body. So when you're sneezing, it's like God blessing you. You're getting rid of all the diseases. Because God is real. So anyways, back to, uh, back to cancer. our cancer here. Our cancer. Our, your cancer. Taking ownership. <laughs> Taking ownership. Cancer. I think your channel has touched so many people around the world. You're getting fan mail, you're getting questions from other cancer survivors, and I think it's amazing what you're doing. Like about what inspired you to start your channel. Another cool thing about it, before I get into what I started, is that it's connecting with people that, that don't even have cancer. She has inspired me, I mean, on some of the days where I'm studying and wanting to shoot myself because I have 10,000 pages to read in a textbook. I watch one of your videos and just see you fighting something real serious, a lot more serious than what I'm dealing with, and, and it inspires me, you know, and I think a lot of people feel the same way. Oh, I'm so happy. It's cool that I get to inspire people no matter what struggle they're dealing with or what challenge they're facing. We all connect in some way. The day that I was diagnosed, I whipped out the camera. I noticed that evening I had plans to go bowling already before I knew about all this. I went okay. bowling and got really drunk, and um, I decided that I was going to film. I love making videos. It's like a hobby of mine. Every time I travel, every time I do things, it's just, it was a, a wee little child. I think that's why we connect so well and why we get to do fun things like this. And I feel like it's it's important for me. It inspires me and it inspires other people and I think that that's really great and that I am able to take such a shitty thing and make it you know, into like a, into a sunflower and make it grow and be happy. And you and your sunflowers. Me and my sunflowers. Did you decide to do this on your own or was this sort of something where, you know, your friends and family had told you, you know, you're amazing at making videos, you have this situation, like let's do something with it, you know? All me. All you, huh? Mm -hmm. So I think the rest of the world should take on this kind of positive attitude toward things. I do it. it. Be positive. And I have the vibe attracts the tribe. I think that's how we met really, even though we met through other means. Just what? The Jace was. <laughs> and we ended up becoming good friends off of it, which is awesome. You gotta blow it up. Blow it up, blow it up, blow it up. I'm glad that I was able to come with you to uh, keep up today. Me too. At the University of Miami facility, by the way. Shout out to the U. Yes. Taking care of Racheli here. It's a beautiful facility. I will never go anywhere else. I'm glad that you're well taken care of. And Hoffy. Hoffy. 
and Dana. But uh, obviously you have your ups and downs. Overall, has it been a pretty positive experience? I mean, clearly you have that good attitude when it comes to these things, but um, you know, can you explain some of the feelings you've gone through? My process, ups, downs, sideways, turns. I mean, that's literally what it's like. It's like, <laughs> what's something that does that? I'm thinking of something that looks like this. <laughs> it's crazy. Obviously, it's been a positive experience, but that's because I make it a positive experience. Somebody that doesn't have my attitude on this could have got, gotten diagnosed with the same exact thing, had the same exact support system, had the same exact friends, had to do all the same things, I feel like. And if without the positive attitude, it could have been a much harder experience. And I'm not minimizing the fact that this is hard on me, because this is hard. This is like one of the hardest things that I'll ever have to deal with. Just, just the word cancer is like fucking scary. Like, yeah. And to think that that was inside my body, my healing process is definitely working. Um, there are down times and there's up times. The down times are actually really important for you to like reconnect with yourself and find your true feelings and be scared and be angry and be sad but I think that the most important thing is to remember to regroup and then connect back to your core and if your core is positive then you know everything else will be okay and you'll you'll kind of balance it all out that's why I'm very grateful to have that outlook on life and I know that not everybody has that because maybe they just didn't think that that could be a thing. I'm hoping that my videos can reach out to people who don't have that outlook yet and kind of help them resurface and see that there's an end to this and, and light through the process and there's some dark through the process too. And I love that you show both sides of it. Everybody has their dark days, you know, and, and I love that you do show those moments and you get real on camera Thank and you. I think that's why people also really connect with it. That was the most important thing to me at the beginning, I think. I. I just want to be really raw with my viewers and with my family and my friends. And at first it didn't even almost start as a way to inspire other people that, because I didn't really know where I would go with this. I could have ended up being really negative or turned really negative. It actually started because I wanted to share it with like friends and family. That way I didn't have to like touch so many people every day or have to explain it every day. It's a very good point. Yeah, it was super by inspiring. accident, like not forced at all. Shit, did I force this on people? And then I look back at my videos and I'm like, no, that just like, came just out of my mouth. You're just telling your story. I want to know more about chemo. What drugs are you specifically taking? So I'm getting ABVD, adriamycin, gliomycin, vinblastine, and decarbazine. I haven't had diarrhea. I've just gotten constipated. Side effects are different for everybody. Our chemistry is mm -hmm. made up very differently. With that being said, adriamycin, which is doxorubicin as well, aka you said that gives heart problems, right? Yep. I haven't gotten any heart problems. So bleomycin is the one that causes the lung toxicity. So before chemo, I had to get a pulmonary functions test, which I have videos of, you can check those out. And I forgot to say with the adriamycin, which is the one that everybody is so scared of and makes people so emotional and, you know, makes makes cancer cancer is the hair loss. And how are you dealing with that? I'm not like crazy upset about it. I'm dreading me needing to shave my head. I think she'd look cool. Like Demi Moore in that movie back in the day with Britney Spears. Natalie, Natalie Portman. Portman, dude, Natalie Portman. The only reason that I'd be okay with it. I had really thick and nice, beautiful hair. If Stiffy G wants to put a picture of what that used to look like. <laughs> in, in videos and stuff, you can't really tell what my hair looks like because I just put it up and put a headband so on. And now, look at that. <laughs> so it, it just comes this out. This is gonna be me in like honestly five ten years anyways. I can it does grow back pretty quickly once camp, the chemo stops, right? Yeah, that's different for everybody. This is a souvenir. No, I've got plenty of more where that came from. <laughs> well, not that much left. <laughs> Another thing with the hair loss, lost my nose hairs. It's not just like comes out. Like, my leg hair, my pubic hair, and my armpit hair grow back at a much slower and pace. Besides like the listed symptoms and and whatnot, has it made you feel? Actually, inside, like really, really sick and down and fatigued and like yeah. shit. So I have two weeks between chemo's. Week after, I'm kind of in bed the whole time, chilling, taking it easy. And then the week after is when I'm like, get me out of this goddamn house. When I come in, to take her out. Never. Why are you lying? <laughs> I know I suck. I'm the worst He's friend. He's lying. Honestly. I really am the worst friend. But today is great. If he wasn't here, out. I probably would have just laid on the couch and watched a movie. My spirits are raised when I have friends to come lift me up. Although my family is a great support system, it's what I see every time. That with chemo, one of the side effects, not not a medical side effect, but one of the things are that like, by association I get sick. I hate things. 
that are associated with it. I think it's mind over matter, like my spirits are raised. There's one video where I really, I think, stuck with me and stuck with a lot of your viewers, where you were talking about how there's times when you really want your family and friends around, and then there's times when um, you just really want to be left alone. But at the same time, you kind of want someone there, but don't. You're like, Turn you're like, just I want someone there to tickle my back and just not talk. Is that just because you're just feeling so like shitty inside and just hurting so bad that you don't really want to have to give any energy out? Does it like exactly speak, speak it with is. somebody? It's exactly what it is. But you want like the comfort of somebody being there and touching you. Is that kind of I mean, that's kind of what I got from it? That's you know? exactly what it is. It's hard for me because I'm such a people pleaser sometimes. So I want to make sure that I'm giving you all my attention and that I'm being thoughtful and I'm listening to you and I'm caring about what you have to say. But when I'm in my mood, like my chemo, or, or sometimes even it's not after chemo, sometimes I'm just having a down day. In those moments, I kind of feel like I want to be selfish and I want to not have to talk, not have to please anybody. It's nice to just be laying there. Having that like cuddle comfort and that back tickle comfort. It is nice. But not really needing to be on. For I would like to know your sex drive on chemo. No, this is not for me personally. So one of her viewers actually submitted this question to her, right? I think this yeah. is, it's funny how a lot of people are interested in like whether your sex drive is affected or if they chemo They just want to know because they want to have sex with me. So <laughs> I'm definitely less adventurous. At the beginning of chemo, I, I didn't know what it was going to be like. I was kind of scared to have sex because there's such like a, uh, not a taboo, but like a, I can't get pregnant, can't get any kind of infection, I can't get sick, I was so scared of getting sick, I almost like didn't want to make out with people, which I didn't really. <laughs> and I don't have a boyfriend, so like anybody that I do have sex with, it's not gonna be somebody that I've been with for a long time. So my sex drive, <laughs> sometimes it's like super high and I'm like, yeah, and then sometimes they'll just randomly get dry. My know. doctor and my nurse told me about that before this all started. But it's not terrible, like I'll, you know, I'll be up for it, some days I won't. I don't really have anybody to have sex with every day. Oh yeah, could I ask questions about the dating app though? Is that cool? When you speak with someone on the dating app, right, and they start asking you about their, their, your life and they want to know what you're doing and you know, if you want to meet up, whatnot, and you're not feeling good, how do you go about breaking the news about your situation? Or do you even break the news? My reaction was very positive with it, you know, because obviously I'm in medicine, so I'm, I'm fascinated by this stuff. So when I had seen that, I was pretty excited to text you about it and write you. A lot you know? of people are very apologetic. If I feel like it needs to get brought up, or if you ask me a question, <clears throat> and whatever, a lot of people follow me straight on Instagram when they find me on these apps. Now, do they see your hospital shots? Or do they see you doing your pole dancing? Pole dancing, <laughs> chemolicious pole fitness. If people ask me what I'm doing in Florida or like what I do for a living or things like that, I say, well, I nanny, but I'm taking a break right now or something like that. I don't specifically go out, go out and say it. Or sometimes I do. Sometimes people are like, oh, what do you do? Or like blah, 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 I'll be like, chemo. Sometimes though, the conversation is going so terribly. You're just like, all right, peace, just I have take, chemo, don't, don't I have talk chemo. to me. Really <laughs> if you wanna date stuff. me, you can't. Taken, huh? Okay. You're tired, huh? Die. So what would you say to somebody who doesn't have the support system, who perhaps lives alone, doesn't have a family and whatnot? Who's these? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna say I don't have the perfect support system. I think that with any support system, there are flaws and imperfections. I am very grateful though for what I do have. I think that we work as a very good team. My family and I have been through a lot together before this. Sometimes it feels like it's one thing after the other. And I think that's what's brought my family so close together. My dad's not in the picture, so my mom and I are very close. We've spent a lot of time just the two of us. My brothers are much older than me and they're like my best friend. I think it's the dynamic that makes it really great. Friends wise for me, that's a really hard situation because I lost two of my best friends because of this. I understand that. I understand that not everybody knows how to deal with cancer. Exactly. Which in reality shows you who your true friends are. You know? I'm grateful to know who will be there for me and who is there for me. People that haven't been in my life in years have, you know, kind of resurfaced. And there's also people who I've met through this process have just, you know, been the support that I needed. So it's cool because there's also this like self-esteem issue that comes with cancer where you don't feel like yourself and you feel like you're a different person. So for people to meet me and see and say and reflect to me all the things that they think about me, that confirms to me that I haven't changed that much because this is who I was before this. You know, as weird as this is, my ex's family is one of my greatest support systems. And, uh, his brother and I are very good friends and his mom is a great support system and his aunt. And I'm very grateful to have them in my life. So it's like weird dynamics here and there that make my support system so unique. And I think that everybody's support systems are unique. Whether you are alone in your home 
needing to go do this or not, which breaks my heart in my first video or my second video. I said that if you don't have a support system, I can't be your support system because I'm going through this too and I need to be comforted and I can't always be there to comfort somebody, but I said watch my videos, like come, you can email me, you can, I will always respond to you. I don't know, the only thing that I can say is like to reach out for me, send me a message. There's a bunch of support groups on Facebook. Even I, with a great support system, sometimes need to find that comfort with the people who get what I'm going through. So I'll post in there, people will post, I'll answer questions. It's a really nice place to bounce feelings back and forth. There's also other programs like with the American Cancer Society called Look Good, Feel Better, which was like kind of a support group and kind of like a way to learn how to do your makeup. You get a bunch of free makeup. That was cool. The cancer centers, there's usually support groups if that's what you think you need. Also this program is called Immerman Angels. I've also been in touch with this really awesome guy named Ben who had Hodgkin's and he, he started this nonprofit organization called Cuck Cancer. I, as much as I want chemo and cancer to be over and as much as I hate it, I'm kind of scared for it to be over now that it's become my new norm. I think people Scary always fear you know, the, the unknown. The unknown, yeah. Yeah, and before I didn't have to pay for rent in LA, now I have to find a new apartment. What am I gonna do after cancer? Yeah, like what am I gonna make videos of? See? Now I'm you, scared. The dream is like to like start doing TED Talks. You, honestly, you really could. Especially for something like Hodgkin's lymphoma. You could just be a spokesperson for this disease. If I ever have a patient, shit, I'll send my patient to you just for even a little bit of support. And I, mean, I don't know anything about the support systems out there in America, groups to meet up with and whatnot. So yeah. that's cool that you know you, you just have all this down and that you're sharing it. So I was thinking that one day, the Kelly over here will be on the Ellen show. Yeah, that could be cool. My mom always said in her life, like, I need to be on Ellen. I'm gonna write to Ellen. I have to write to Ellen. I'm like, Emma, what will you write her for? And then now she keeps saying it. I'm like, do you know how many people with cancer write to Ellen? Why is she gonna pick me? Ellen always has like those crazy YouTube videos though. Like, yeah, but I don't like, do one anything like, I'm talking kid. about cancer. I know, but like, I mean, maybe she brings people on like that too though. I mean, Everything I don't know. that's happened in our lives and my mom, I, I think I get my like attitude from my mom because she just like, she fucking pushes through man. So much has happened to her and she's just like, well, let's go. It's in your genes, that's why you're like this, huh? Yeah, so does cancer. <laughs> and you mentioned everything happens for a reason, and I like to say, like, yeah, everything happens for a reason, but I think you make that reason. You have to decide, you have to make that conscious decision to allow other things to happen from it, right? So Instead I think of... that's pretty much it. Um, we covered a lot, right? Radiant Rack Kelly over here, killing it, killing it.